and the Steelers go to three and three. The Seahawks go to two and four. You see the Steelers, big favorites on the money line, minus 230, that cash. But Seattle did cover the spread. They were getting five, five and a half, depending upon when you got it. Roethlisberger failed to cover eight straight Sunday night football starts. The over-under in mean, total was, was a push dead on 43, and you needed some wild stuff to even get it to 43 in the end. So you see both quarterbacks had very high completion percentages, very low yards, one touchdown, no picks, but one fumble each. Problem was, Geno's was in overtime, so Pittsburgh gets the win. All right, T.J. Watt got paid and then made a play, right? This is a guy that knows how to force a fumble. Nobody's done it better since 2017, and the strip sack in overtime with Geno Smith was the difference and made it a very easy field goal for the Steelers, who get their third win on the season. All right, Jonathan Jones, CBS Sports Senior NFL writer. Ryan Wilson, draft expert, NFL expert. Good to have you guys aboard. I'm Eric Casilius, and let's start here. Pittsburgh gets to three and three. Uh, JJ, are they okay now, right? I mean, they got there. They checked the box. They got to win. They're three and three. They've steadied. Are they okay? Yeah, right. Big win over the Seattle Seahawks. A perennial playoff content. No, they're not okay. Uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers are, are not okay. This was a game that should have been settled in regulation, should have never gone to overtime. The Pittsburgh Steelers are a better team. Ben Roethlisberger, not that great of a quarterback. We know that he uh, is immobile, and Mike Tomlin <laughs> has almost joked about it, saying, listen, there's nothing he's getting back, uh, you know, with his mobility. We understand that. But I thought that the defense played well enough against Geno Smith. The issue for the Pittsburgh Steelers really was in the second half, their rush defense, because the Seattle Seahawks just said, you know what? Coming out of halftime, we're going to run the football on you. Pete Carroll wants to run the football more. They don't have Russell Wilson. They came out in the first series of the first drive of the second half. They had 10 plays. Nine of them were rushes. One was a pass from Geno Smith, and then they punched the football into the end zone, of course, via run. And that's what their sort of script was there in the second half. They wanted to physically dominate the Pittsburgh Steelers, and for a large portion of the second half, they were able to do that. And Geno, hey, we don't need to force it with him. We're just going to sort of dink and dunk. We'll take my, our shots whenever we need to. This is a big win for the Pittsburgh Steelers because they really needed this win, but it's not a good win by any stretch of the imagination. Ryan, um, the offense, we sort of knew what they were, right? Bad offensive line, old quarterback who can matriculate the ball down the field slowly, to use an old NFL term, but really can't bomb it down the field. Injured wide receivers, but the defense we thought was elite. And, and they got punched in the mouth in the second half. Not once, not twice, but pretty much play in, play out for like basically two full quarters. Is this still an elite defense? Are they okay? No, no, they're not. And again, you, if you have to rely on your defense in 2021 to carry your offense, you're not going to get very far. This isn't uh, 2000 with the Ravens. This isn't 85 Bears to go back even further. This is 2021, and the Steelers' defense is okay. They're a top 10 unit, but you're going up against offenses that are throwing for 300, 400 yards. And oh, by the way, you, as you noted, DK, yeah, you shut out Geno Smith uh, in the first half, but then Alex Collins ran for over 100 yards on 20 carries, mostly in the second half, and there were no no answers until the last five minutes of the fourth quarter when the, the Seahawks had to throw the ball. So your defense can be, quote-unquote, elite in 2021 and be a top five, top ten unit. It ain't going to matter if Ben Roethlisberger is your quarterback. And, and I sort of feel like, you know, you talk about Pyrrhic victories, that's when your best player gets hurt, but you still win the game. I think it's a Pyrrhic victory that the Steelers won and Roethlisberger is still their quarterback. Because I don't know what plan B is if you plan on moving forward with him and relying on the defense to make plays. Because that's not going to be, you know, that's sort of the, the hope ain't a plan type of situation. And that's where the Steelers find themselves. Yeah, they're tied for third with the Browns. It doesn't matter in a division where the Ravens are balling out. All right, the other side is Seattle. Um, they didn't have their starting quarterback. They didn't have their starting running back. Their defense coming in had been historically bad statistically. Do you feel better about the Seahawks? Do you feel like, hey, we're 2-4, and four, and yeah, we're in a tough division, but you know what? Russ is going to come back at some point in time. We're treading water. We went on the road against a good team in their city, and we played them toe-to-toe, -to -toe, and we can run the ball a little bit. Can I sell you that you should feel a little better about Seattle? Ryan. 
If they were in the AFC South, absolutely. But as we sit here, they're still in the NFC West and they're in last place. And that's the reality. We'll see what happens when the 49ers get back, get back to work. But they're two and three. Seahawks are two and four. And here's what's coming up for Seattle. New Orleans, they play the Jaguars by week. Then it's Packers, Cardinals. And you don't feel great about that, even with the possibility of Russell Wilson coming back. Because by the time he gets back, it may be too late in a division where you're definitely going to have two teams going to the playoffs. So, yeah, moral victory tonight, if you want to call that with Geno Smith, but it's not going to help your playoff chances, and you need Russ back sooner than later, and unless you have a time machine, EK, that ain't happening. Yeah, I don't think that they're going to be beating the New Orleans Saints. They'll probably beat the Jags, but this was an opportunity for the Seattle Seahawks to go ahead and steal that win. Didn't have the Seahawks going into this game, but they were in position to win the football game, and they did not. And so I said earlier that this is not a good win for the Pittsburgh Seahawks. Of course, anyone uh, who wants to be a smart guy would say, well, any win is good, so it has to be a good win. Listen, I don't think this was a good win for the Pittsburgh Steelers and this was not uh, a good loss or, or or for the Seattle Seahawks it was a bad loss and so it wasn't good for anybody ultimately the team who's walking away with this is the Pittsburgh Steelers with a W but I just don't think they feel great about the way that they performed tonight um, we talked about Pittsburgh's defense just very quickly who's the best defense in football off the top of your head if you couldn't look it up and you just had to write one down the Steelers have been bad football team we thought maybe they've been dreadful Baltimore has banged up and been lit up. Denver's been lit up lately and got lit up today. San Francisco, who's the best defense in football? The, the Buffalo Bills are probably the best defense, the best scoring defense in football. But but even when you say it, like, I want to limit it somewhere, the scoring defense, right? I know yeah. I, that's exactly my point. I, right. Yeah. Lit up by Arizona? Well, and the, Ravens, building? the Ravens also just did to Justin Herbert. They only allowed six points. So, I mean, yes, they're banged up. And they, some, right. So, you're going to go Ravens, top line? Well, I'm, go, I'm going Bills, number one. I'm going Ravens, two or three. I mean, the Browns come to mind, 47 points last week against Justin Herbert, and they got the doors blown up a Kyler Murray this week so right. I don't know I don't know either I think I would probably say Rams Bills and I don't know if I'm right either so there you go uh Pittsburgh's defense got beat up tonight but they did get a win at the end of the day you check the box you move along you take the W and we'll give you an opportunity to talk football listen they do a great job of the Pick 6 podcast right well it's part of that crew uh and you just it's, if you're an NFL fan you should be checking this out you download you subscribe you enjoy it Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.